Hey guys, today we're doing lay flat photography. This can be for product or food. Today we're using food and we're using shredded wheat. But we're doing this with an iPhone 11. Now you can do it with a DSLR, you can do it with a point and shoot. But one of the cool things we're going to do with the iPhone 11 is we're going to use the Apple Watch to take our photos. So let's get into this one because it's kind of cool. Here's our little setup. I've got a fake marble uh, look going on right now. It's just basically a piece of laminate uh, attached onto foam core. I'll put a link in the description down below on how you can create those. I made a full video on it and you can get some really cool looks with it. So I've got kind of a marble look going on, which I think goes quite well with our breakfast look on a countertop. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you need some support system for either your cell phone point and shoot or DSLR. You can handhold if you want, but I tend to be a bit shaky and this way it allows me to play with the composition while everything's nice and steady. The other bonus of having it mounted and steady is one, it's flat. Two, I get to use a slower shutter speed than I can holding by hand, especially using natural light. So here I'm using a Manfrotto tripod and I picked up this model years ago specifically for the center column because the center column will come up and then go 90 degrees which is very handy for just such an occasion now sometimes i will weight the tripod down especially if i have my big dslr on there the iphone i don't think my tripod is going to get tipped over because of it so i didn't worry about it but with the DSLR, I can weight it down, but the tripod is fantastic for this. There is overhead rigs that I've seen people using, and you can make and create your own of those. For this one, though, I'm simply using the Manfrotto tripod. Just love that one. Now, the other thing we need to look at now is light. And as you know, in my studio, I don't have any natural light. So I need to use studio lighting, which is what I mainly use. But for the videos, I tend to use the LEDs to create more of a natural light because I think most of you people have natural light available to you versus studio strobes. So what I'm using here is the newer uh, LED behind uh, an umbrella and we're shooting the light through. Now, I don't have the light coming from the front or the side. I've got it coming from slightly behind. The eyes like angles in photos. So by having the light back a bit and on a bit of an angle, the shadows that it casts through create that bit of an angle and it becomes more appealing to the human eye. So that's why my light is where it is. Now, the lighting's a little off on this for, for taking pictures because I need to light in here to create the video and I need to be able to light to shoot here. So right now I got a bit of mismatch lighting going on. All right, so let's have a look to see what the camera sees right now from the iPhone. So you can have a look at that top down view. Okay, so you can see what's going on within the frame. You can see how I've got the spoon laid in here and I've got some stuff out on the corner of the frame, my little sugar bowl and our main subject right here. I've added some color with the napkin kind of folded up underneath and the strawberries give it that little extra pop, which is very cool. Now, I've put the spoon on a bit of an angle, again, because remember we're working with the angles. Very important for that. This napkin has some uh, grooving to it, so it creates a bit of texture. Texture is hugely important in food photography. Now, also, don't be scared to do what I've done like here. Your picture doesn't have to be all contained inside the frame. You can go out to the outside edge of the border Experiment, play with your composition. You can move things out to the edge of your frame. It does not have to be all crammed up in tight, getting, every, getting everything inside. You can move things out to create a little more pleasing look. I also have this spoon going a certain direction. It's matching the lines on here. All right, so that's what the iPhone is seeing right now. As I say, the lighting's a little off, because I'm using more lighting to create the video than I would if I was using it just to shoot the food with. But you're getting a very good idea of how the camera sees this, and I will show you some photos taken with the iPhone with the proper lighting.
like I say, don't be scared to have things peek into the frame, like that half a cup of coffee in this shot, uh, part of the napkin cut off. How about part of the bowl showing? The other thing you can do is you can create negative space. So you can have your main food on this area and you've got an open spot on the counter here, which allows text to be put in, right? So you get a bit of copy space there. Don't be scared to play with your composition. Doing the top down like this is great because you can look through your phone or your, your camera and you can see how it's looking and adjust your composition. Now you're not restricted by that. Now, if you're using a DSLR, you can remotely release it, or you can use a self-timer. Now, because I'm using the iPhone 11, why don't we use the Apple Watch? I think that would be really cool. What do you think? So, the Apple Watch pairs Bluetooth to the iPhone if you're not aware of the Apple Watch at all, but it has a camera app. I'm basically using the standard Apple app that comes with it, and that's how I can control this. All right, so let me just show you right now on the Apple Watch what it's like, and I've got it in video mode right now, so you can have a look. But there you go. All right, now you've got the live view from my Apple Watch. I'm in video mode on the iPhone 11, and on the app on the watch, you can see I've got the record button to start and stop the recording. And we are actually live, as you can see, with my hand underneath here, which is very cool. In photos, you get to take a picture right away, or it has a self-timer, which is very handy, especially if you're doing some selfies, which I've done in the past. So that's a quick look at the, on the watch on how it pairs with the iPhone 11 and how you can use it to preview your images. How cool is that? All right. That's the, the basic setup here. As I say, this is our little hero. Our light's coming in from here. Now, one thing you may encounter is because the light's coming in this direction, you're a little heavy shadowed on this side. If you've seen some past videos, what do we do? Take our trusty piece of foam core, little clamp maybe, and boom. This will bounce some of that light back in. Now, we don't want the light on this side to be as bright as the light on that side. When your light is even like that, it creates a very flat looking image, and you don't want that. You want to be able to bring out some of the texture in, the, in that shredded wheat or any of the food or product that you're doing. So shadow's too dark there, add this in. This will lighten your shadows and fill in just a little bit where you need to. And you can just simply move this around where you need to to get the picture that you want. These are really handy. This is a piece of foam core. If you find this side a little too bright, because maybe you've got a window back over here as well that you can't totally block, then you can put a piece of black foam core here and it'll block some of that light because black will absorb it and make this side darker than normal. All right, so basically that's what you've got for a lay flat shoot. Now, you can do product, you can do food, you can have a lot of fun with this with all your propping and everything else. Food photography, the, the, the two real main uh, photos that are used are lay flats, top downs like this, and shot 90 degrees straight on to the food. The other angle used, if you want to say, is about a 45 degree angle. But the two main ones, if you look at a lot of magazines and everything else, they're straight down or they're shot straight on. Okay, so this is a setup that you can use, like I said, for DSLR, point and shoot, or cell phone, Android or iPhone. I love the iPhone 11 for doing this stuff. The quality out of it is just amazing. And because I get to control the iPhone with my watch, that makes it really, really handy for me to be able to use my watch as a controller. And not only that, I can see what's going on within the frame. So I can sit here and adjust things because I can see it happening on my watch. It is a bit laggy and a bit jumpy sometimes, but on the whole, works brilliant. All right, if you have any questions about this or any of the equipment, please leave a comment down below. I'll definitely get back to you. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. So, until the next time.